Okay, and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking apart this joystick. Now this is the Logitech Wingman Extreme. And this is the this is an older model. This is from possibly even the 90s. You can see it actually has a game port. Now game port is something you used to plug into your sound card uh, back before USB um, uh, plug and play. Uh, but it is a good joystick. This is this was mine. Uh, I used to play Star Wars Rogue Squadron with this. This was a really good joystick for that. And it's a good solid joystick. And I've never taken one of these apart. I have no idea how they work. I've um, been trying to theorize how, but I can't come up with really any idea. Obviously you have an X and Y axis. Actually you have a Z as well because it twists. It's got the yaw control. And then you also have of course your throttle and we are going to find out how all of that works today and so we're gonna get started um, have five screws on the bottom they are just regular screws so that's good and then here on the top I think this plate probably comes off looks like with an Allen wrench but let's find out let's start with the bottom aha the old trick so all five screws are off and it's still not coming off that means there's another screw, and they put it right under there. See there? And so that's really kind of their way of knowing whether somebody tampered with this um, for like a warranty claim or something like that. But I'll take that sticker off and take that screw off, and then we'll get it off. Okay, so after getting the sticker off of there, I am presented with what I really don't know what I'm looking at. It almost, whoops. Okay, it almost looks like a flathead screw slot, but it's not. And I cut away a little bit on the top there because it looked like another indentation, but it turned out to just be an indentation. So what this is, I don't know. I think it was a kind of a, a peg that was glued. Um, anyway, it is still stopping the bottom from coming off. Uh, temporarily, I think that what I'm going to do is switch to the top. I'm going to start getting the top apart. You can see there's just screws on the side. Take the sides of the joystick off and maybe take that plate off and see what's in there. Okay, so I got the two screws out here and it's still not coming apart. And so I'm looking around here and I spot this little curious thing here. What that ends up being is a yaw lock, a twist lock. If you turn that a quarter turn, the joystick will no longer twist. But that is not a screw holding it together. As it turns out, under there, way under the boot, there's a couple more screws got to come off. So we got to go in there and get those out. Okay, okay now that's a part. Now, um, first thing I want to look at here is the yaw control. As it turns out, this whole plastic shaft does not twist. It's only this part inside that shaft that twists. And so that right there is your yaw control. Very interesting. Now this little nub here, this little tiny, tiny little nub, when I try to put this back together, I'm going to have to try to get that back into that little groove there. You can see there, there's the opening for the shaft, and that head's going to have to go into there. And so when the handle twists, it will engage that and make this twist. That's if I even try to put this back together. Otherwise, here on the handle, you had a couple of buttons there, which are now right there, and they control these two buttons here. And there's your hat switch, and then the back of the hat switch is right there, and I'll take this circuit board off the slightest little movements there. I'm going to take a closer look at that. And then there is your trigger. Curiously, it looks like the little spring was up against the screw hole. And that just engages this switch down here. Pretty neat. And then otherwise, there's just a couple more buttons there, which are going to be the same exact kind of little um, momentary contact switches there. 
So uh, I guess I will take that little circuit board off to get a closer look at that hat, hat switch now. Okay, so there's the hat switch completely off in the top plate. So there's a look, it's just a loose piece of plastic in this little retainer with this screw loosely holding it on. And so the hat switch can go four different directions. And let me get that off for a second because I want to show you the circuit board. It's pretty neat. Okay, and so there we go. Um, who knew they would just run four switches in a pattern that is going to accommodate that um, hat switch. And let me try to get that in there. I don't know how well that's going to work. As you can see, you've got the, um, the surfaces. I need to cock that about that way. And you see it's tight in there, and as it toggles, it, push it pushes the switches. So that explains that. Just four switches in a northeast-southwest pattern. Pretty neat. So I guess that wraps it up for the handle. Let me get these Allen wrench screws off to get this plate off and see what's under there. Okay, I got all those Allen wrenches, Allen screws loose, but it is still not giving it up. Uh, so it must be still con connected underneath somehow. I have a feeling all that's doing is holding this boot on anyway. I'm not sure if I want to go down there. I don't know why it's so gooey in there. But Anyway, so that's not going to come off. That's not really going to get us anywhere. So we are back to this little peg here. The only thing I can think to do now is drill it out so that we can get the bottom cover off. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so here's a look at how this is going. As it turns out, that area that looked like it had a kind of um, slotted screw head, that was all under here. And as you can see there, that is nothing. But that little area a little bit above it turns out to be the area that has this kind of a molded crosshair and that's telling me that's actually where this is melted or glued together or whatever why they would go through that much trouble to keep you from getting in there I don't know but I'm just uh, working at it with the Dremel and I will get through it and we'll get this cover off so far it hasn't let go we're just giving a look at how that's happening so next cut, next scene will be the cover off. Okay, so this is what's happening now. Unfortunately, I think I kind of ruined the whole idea. This appears to have been the anchor for the stick. So when I'm moving the stick up and down and around, now that whole thing's moving, whereas before, of course, it didn't move. And so that is supposed to be the anchor point in the base for the stick, and then the... Um, the stick and its contacts, or however on earth that works, will work relative to that. But now that that's off, that's going to change things a little bit. And um, ironically, the bottom plate still won't come off, so I don't know what to do now. I'm going to end up having to just kind of grind off this whole area because it appears to be glued on. So that's what I'm doing next, but I do, it does look like I, I ruined it, but that would just have to be epoxy back on. No big deal. So, yeah. Next, next scene, for real this time, will be the bottom plate off, no matter what. Okay, so I know I said that the next scene was going to have the bottom plate off, but as you can see here, now I've got, gone completely for broke. I've cut this whole area out to stop fooling around, and it's still not letting go. And so, um, the only other thing that I can think of, if you look at these little, th these little crosshairs here, I think each one of these is part of the base, molded, it's probably a snap. It's probably a shaft that goes and snaps in on the other side of that bottom plate, whatever on earth is under there. And um, so there's no way to get the, the top off to get a hold of the other side of those snaps or those shafts or whatever it is. So it has to be taken apart this way. Unfortunately, this is going to be com completely ruined, but I'm guessing joysticks are not serviceable. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to find out once I'm in there how it was supposed to be taken apart. I don't know. 
But now I'm going to grind all four of these off and possibly even this here um, to get this off the hard way. This has really turned into a challenge, but I really want to see how the joystick, um, the base of the joystick works because um, I have no idea and I want to see it. So we press on. Okay, so there they all are, all completely ground out, and I did let go, so I'm fairly convinced they're snaps, but it's still not quite letting the plate off. It looks like it wants to leave the base there, and it wants to take the top off. So I came back out here, since I'm already kind of ruining things, I've pried really hard and got this plate off. I've unplugged the little circuit board that was up there. So that this little plate, which does seem to be just kind of a cover, there we go. That off of there. There. And then take the boot off, which is covered in just a nasty gel, which must be just some kind of grease. Um, yep, going to have to wash my hands after this scene, for sure. Oh yeah, this is, this is extra gooey. This is no good at all. But it must be removed, I'm sure of it. Oh yeah, that's a hand washing. And then this is not the actual, we're getting that gooey too. That must be connected to something down there. That's actually, this of course was the throttle. And this is just a way to make it operate smooth. But it must be connected to something down there. Doesn't, oh, there we go. And we'll find that out in a minute. Put this up here. Extra gooey. Hey, and we're finally starting to see down in there. Now, I'm going to wash my hands, and I'm going to get this cover plate off. And this time, for sure, it'll be off. We'll take a look. Okay, and so there we are. Finally, finally got it. Cover off. Cover sitting over there. Uh, where to begin? There's, okay, the simplest part is these two little switches here, which translate to these two buttons on the base. And I'm being very careful about just these two little pegs sticking up that make contact with those. And you know what? I wanted to comment. This, this particular gel or grease is extremely hard to get off your hands, as it turns out. I mean, I was even using the uh, Gojo, and it wasn't coming off. Ended up having to use WD-40. Uh, so that stuff right there, that paste, you got to be careful not to get that on your hands. Um, it's uh, really gooey. Anyway, this little lever here, this is what was at the other other side. Oh, and I just got grease on myself again. So I'm going to have to pause and go wash my hands. So this was on here, and that twists like that, and it had one of these little curious little switches here. And I was trying to figure out how on earth does that work. There was another one in the main part of the stick, if you remember, for the yaw control. And I'm looking at it, looking at it, and so I look at the one here. And um, it has this little, just a little dial here that turns. And there's your little controller for yaw, and you've got the same type of controller here that's on there. It comes right off, I'm sure. Maybe it doesn't. Well, probably with some levering. Um, that's how your throttle works, that little dial. Which is going to be a uh, rheostat, basically. Uh, sort of. You know, basically. Anyway, a uh, very basic circuit board here. There's your chip controlling everything. And I'll pull that out just to see if there's anything on the underside of that. But the main area of curiosity, of course, is going to be the base of this joystick. And so now we got to take that off to go take a look at that. You can already kind of see it. It's another one of those, isn't it? It's going to be two of those. Well, never mind. So it's this same kind of switch again or dial. 
But how is that going to be controlled? Got to take this apart. Which means I'm going to get all gooey again. Uh -oh. Alright, so I'll get that off. Okay, and there is what it looks like in the base there. And what we have, of course, is two more of those little dials. One for the x-axis and one for the y-axis. Try to get in there a little closer. And it operates just by this enclosure. When the stick moves around, it moves those dials. And of course, it would be better if it, the bottom of the stick was anchored, which it used to be, until I cut it off. Honestly, I don't think that this would have come apart if I hadn't done that. And you have a big spring providing your tension, which I believe is what's going to force it. Yeah, okay, so that's probably going to force it up. And um, I'm thinking that's what's making it return to zero. But I maybe, yeah, I believe so. So the tension on that spring is probably making it return to the center uh, if you let go of the stick. But, you know, one of these is x-axis, the other is y-axis. You can see the whole thing move in there. This thing here, there we go. One is x, the other is y. Goes into those dials, sends the signals to the little circuit board and back to your computer. And let me tell you, I had not any idea that it was this gooey inside. Of course, it has to be gooey to provide fluid motion. So it has to be in there. And you're going to have to take my word on it. There's nothing on the bottom side of that circuit board. I just wanted to make sure. And ultimately, that is it. So. What I've done is made an enormous mess, but I did get to the bottom of it and figure out how this thing works. Uh, so yeah, just four dials. Four of these little dials right there. Actually, a better look at it is right there. Four of these. That's how the whole thing operates. And I'll try to get a close-up of that so you can read those top there. Ten thirty-three. What did I say? Four A seven one. I can't quite see my screen very well. But that is how a joystick works. And now we'll wrap it up for this one. Now I'm not even going to start to try to reassemble this. I'm just going to throw it away as it is. I might save those little dials for who knows what. But otherwise, yeah, this one's a goner. No problem though, because I have two other ones that I actually use, and uh, so I'm still good. Anyway, that'll do it. I appreciate y'all watching. Stay tuned. I've got lots and lots more to come, like that little curious thing over there. I might, maybe. <laughs> um, who knows what's going to be next? I think it's going to be the Black & Decker 40-volt um, hedge trimmer is what's going to come apart next. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.